Gunsmoke. Brought to you by Chesterfield. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed thanks to Accuray. They satisfy the most. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Temple, mow that horse you're in order so I can get mine in there. This hitch rack's pretty crowded, Paris. Can't you tie up someplace else? I said move him over. Here, now, don't do that. No. You hit my horse again, I'll shoot you, Paris. You won't do nothing. What's the matter with you? You drunk? You got a complaint about something, Tip. Yeah, Paris, I got a complaint. Go ahead, Tipple, I'm waiting. All right, hold it there, you men. You stay out of this, Marshal. Not likely. Now, look here, Marshal. I know you're a friend of Tipple's, but I don't know as I like you're protecting him this hard. I'm not protecting anybody, Paris. I'm stopping a gunfight. Now, you get moving. I'll meet you any time, Paris. You shut up. We'll meet right enough. Well, you ain't got your nursemaid around. Why'd you stop it, Matt? He had it coming to him. Ah, you're pretty hot-tempered, aren't you, Ben? Did you see what he done? That's no reason to shoot a man, and you know it. An ordinary man, no, but that Paris has been looking for trouble for a long time. I know what he's like. But you keep away from him, Ben. It's bound to happen, Matt, sooner or later, and I don't hide from no man. You know me well enough for that. Doggone old river is awful high for this time of year, ain't it, Mr. Dillon? I must have been having some big rains up in Colorado. Oh, now that's where I'd like to be. Up in them tall, cool mountains. Yeah? My. Just think of laying on your back up there in the deep grass, drinking snow water and eating trout, and listening to all them pretty birds singing away. <laughs> we'll miss you, Chester. Oh, I ain't going nowhere. Hey, look on the bank there. <laughs> Some fellow fishing. He must have fell asleep. He isn't asleep, Chester. No, sir. I don't believe he is. What? That's Frank Parrish, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Shot in the back. Well, that's terrible. There's his pole. My golly, he was sitting here fishing and somebody sneaked up and shot him. Oh, that's a mean way to die. Well, we'll get a wagon and carry him back to Dodge. All right. Get on, Chester. Get on. I can't see nobody. All right, come out of there. 
You can't get both of us. Come out or we'll start shooting. Don't shoot, Marshal. I'm coming. What? Why, it's only a kid. It's Andy Spangler. Andy, what are you doing out here? Uh, nothing, Marshal. I was going to go fishing, but I lost my line. Well, why were you hiding in the brush there? Him. I heard a shot some time ago, and I come looking around. I found him laying there. And I got scared when I heard you ride up, so I hid. You didn't see anybody? Oh, no, I didn't see nothing. Whoever did it was gone. Oh, my goodness, Mr. Dillon. What is it, Chester? Well, the way Frank and Ben Tipple was carrying on, you don't suppose Ben could have did it, do you? I know he's a good friend of yours and all. Never but... mind, Chester. Uh, well, let's get back to town. Come on, Andy. You can ride behind me. That whistling man, Bobby Haggard, really started something. Tonight, the Calypso boys join in. Ready, amigos? Packs more pleasure, packs more pleasure. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. It stands to reason a cigarette made better and packed better smokes better, tastes better. And Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips. Mild, yet deeply satisfying. Yes, Chesterfield gives you something no other cigarette can give you. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. By Chesterfield, mild, yet they satisfy the most. about to take a little nap now. It's cooled off some. Uh, ben, you heard what happened to Frank Paris yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, I heard. Well? Are you asking me if I did it, Matt? Most everybody in Dodge thinks you did. And what do you think? Well, I've been telling everybody I've known Ben Tipple a long time and that he's hot-tempered and that Frank Paris has been prodding him every chance he had. But the Paris didn't even have his gun out. Besides, he was shot in the back. Mm-hmm. What are people saying to that? They're saying you're a friend of mine. They think that's why I haven't arrested you. Well, is it? I'd go after my own brother if I thought he murdered a man, Ben. Happened yesterday morning sometime, didn't it, Matt? Yeah, that's right. I got no alibi for then. I wasn't with nobody. Yeah, that's too bad. It would have helped. I might have shot Frank Perry someday, Matt, but never in the back. I know that, Ben. But until I find out who did it, you better lay low. <laughs> Just look at this place, Matt. Oh, what's wrong, Kitty? Well, it may be the biggest saloon in Dodge, but it's sure the emptiest. Oh, you're getting greedy, Kitty. 
Fine, it's about time. I'm sure not getting younger. Uh, you're going to be able to retire before you're 30. Why not? Well, I'm glad somebody's getting rich around here. <laughs> <laughs> law sure isn't. No. But the law keeps busy. What? Joe Spangler and his pa. I think he's looking for you, Matt. Oh. Mm. Evening, Miss Kitty. Evening. I want to talk to you, Marshal. Go ahead, Spangler. I want to know why you ain't got Ben Tipple in jail. Frank Ferris was a friend of yours, wasn't he? That don't matter. And it doesn't matter that Ben Tipple's a friend of mine. He didn't do it, Spangler. There's a lot of people who think he did, Marshal. You have any proof? I'm a boy, Andy, and I think he saw Tipple out there. And I'll get it out of him. I whipped him once already. Look, Spangler, your boy would have told me if he'd seen anybody. Why would he try to protect Ben Tipple? Scared. Scared of what? You. What you might do to him if he talked. Now, just a minute, Spangler. Now, he's going to talk. Before I'm through. You get out of here. You're making me mad. Well, no, I didn't aim to do that, Marshal. All I wanted is to get you to do your job. Before somebody has to do it for you. Easy, Matt. Take him apart. Well, that wouldn't help. It'd make me feel better. You'll be all right. Soon you find out who did kill Paris. How am I going to find that out, Kitty? With all this going on, he's as safe as a bear in a hickory tree. <laughs> well... Looks to me like you're going to have a busy day today, man. I am. Why, Doc? Well, I don't know. Now, maybe it's because you did so little yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Do I owe you some money or something, Doc? Oh, no, no, no. You're all paid up, but, uh, you know, man, I've been thinking. <laughs> How much you want, Doc? Oh, ten dollars to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Here you are. Oh, oh, well, thank you. Sure, Doc. Just pay it back by Friday, that's uh, all. Pay, oh, no. You think I was merely asking for a loan? <laughs> you have your own way of doing things, Doc. <laughs> yeah. So's he. What? Huh? Look. That filthy Spangler. No. He's cuffing his boy around again. No, no Pa, don't. I've had about enough of his ways. I warned you, boy. I warned you what you did. You won't learn, will you? All right, that's enough, Spangler. Why? Hey, you just get out of here, Marshal. You ain't interfering in this. Let the boy go, Spangler. Let him go. Uh, no, I no. said that's enough. <laughs> Andy, you stand over here. He won't hit you again. I didn't mean to do it. I told him I didn't. What did you do, Andy? I lost his rifle. I borrowed it to go hunting, and I fell across the river, and I lost it. I ought to kill you, Marshal. Don't try it, Spangler. Now, come on, get on your feet. What right you got coming between the man and this boy? None, I guess, but I took it anyway. That kid ought to be in jail, stealing like he does. He wasn't stealing. It ain't none of your business, Marshal. And I ain't going to talk to you about it. Andy, I'll see to you later. You beat him again, and I'll throw you in jail. He won't beat me because I ain't going home. Not ever. Now, what'll your mother think, Andy? I got no mother. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I forgot, Andy. And he hates me. Look, uh, Andy, if things get bad, you come see me, huh? Anytime. Will you do that? Maybe. And don't let your pa make you say anything that isn't true, Andy. You don't have to. You understand? Yeah. All right. Now, you just remember, you You can come see me any time. <laughs> Where 
are you listening to Gunsmoke? In your favorite easy chair? Or... Out driving? Oh, there you are. In the kitchen. Say, you want to make whatever you're doing more enjoyable? Have a Chesterfield. Enjoy Chesterfield's better taste and mildness. It stands to reason a cigarette made better and packed better, smokes better, tastes better, and Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild yet deeply satisfying. Yes, Chesterfield gives you something no other cigarette can give you. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. By Chesterfield, mild, yet they satisfy the most. <laughs> stars up there just to shine in a way. Yeah. And look at all those lights in the saloons just to shine in a way. You ain't much of a nature lover, are you? <laughs> Not while I got work to do, Chester. What work? Well, for the next few hours, I gotta walk around and try to make sure nobody's gonna get cheated or get too drunk or get killed, maybe. Mm, you're right. Sometimes that can turn into work. <laughs> well, looky there. It's Andy. Now, what's he up to? Marshal Dillon! Yeah, what's the trouble, Andy? They're in that alley right back there. Come on, hurry, come on! Well, who's in the alley? Paul and Ben Tipple. Paul's got him cornered. What? Paul's got the drop on him. He hid out in there and waited for him to come by. But how do you know? What were you doing there? I thought Paul was after me. But he's going to shoot Ben Tipple. I know he is. Well, maybe I can stop him, Andy. I hope so, but I don't know how. All right. Let's slow down here. Uh... You wait here with Chester, Andy. I'm going to go in there alone. You said you are being here with you, Tipple. Well, it's well admitted, and you know it. I wouldn't have minded shooting Frank Paris, but not in the back. Not even him. I guess I'm going to have to kill you. You'll die yourself if you pull that trigger, Smangler. Marshal. Now you drop that gun. No. He killed Frank Paris, and I'm going to shoot him if I die for it myself. Don't be a fool. He's got my gun, Matt. Just stand steady, Ben. Marshal. Get back, Andy. I've got to tell you something. He, he slipped away from me, Mr. Dillon. It's terribly important. Help me keep an eye on Spangler, Chester. Yes, sir. All right, now, what is it, Andy? Hurry up. Bend over. i got to whisper. What? What's going on there? Never mind. You got two men who'll shoot you now, Spangler, and you better not try nothing. I get somebody tired of this. What's that kid doing here anyway? Well, he didn't come here to murder nobody like his pa did. Ben Tipple's the murderer, not me. No, he isn't, Spangler. Tipple didn't shoot Frank Ferris. You said that before, Marshal. Andy did it. Andy? He just told me. What are you saying? It was an accident. He saw something move, and he thought it was an animal, so he fired at it. I don't believe it. The day he took your rifle, when he found he'd shot Paris, he got scared and threw the rifle into the river. You tell him, Andy. It's true. I was too scared to tell anybody before. All right. You heard him, Spangler. Now put up that gun. I don't believe him. He's lying. You stay where you are, boy. Put up your gun, I said. Not hardly. <laughs> ah! You killed him, Matt. He almost killed me, Ben. Andy, I, I'm sorry about your paw. 
But uh, you go with Chester now, huh? He wasn't my pa. What? My real pa died a long time ago. My ma told me about it when she made me change my name. Oh. I guess that's why he never did like me much. Beat me all the time. Yeah. Marshal. What, Andy? When are you going to hang me? Hang you? For shooting Mr. Paris. Is that what you've been thinking? I admitted doing it, didn't I? It was an accident, Andy. Nobody's going to hang you. Ben. What, Matt? He's a mighty brave boy. Yeah. Yeah, he sure is. Why, he spoke up just now to save my life, thinking he'd be hung for it, didn't he? Andy, how'd you like to come home with me? I got a place for a boy like you. You mean that? I sure do. Marshal, you believe me? You think he means it? Yeah, Andy. I think he means it. In a moment, our star, William Conrad. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. A cigarette made better and packed better smokes better, tastes better. And Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips. Chesterfield, mild, yet they satisfy the most. You know, along the frontier, whether because of Indians, a gunman's bullet, or lack of water, death was always near at hand. But next week, it's a girl who causes the death of four men. And that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were John Daner, Vic Perrin, Richard Beals, and Jack Crucian. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Live modern. Smoke l and M. Live modern. Change to L&M. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Only with L&M can you enjoy the full, exciting flavor of today's finest tobaccos. No other cigarette, plain or filter, gives you the full, exciting flavor you get through the pure white miracle tip. So light up. Free up. Let your taste come alive. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gunsmoke.